how everyone i hope you are well walking in the love and favor of our lord and savior jesus christ wherever you are uh, today i'm going to talk about money 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 is a very interesting topic and um over time money has money has been worshipped over 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 the years uh if you look at the music that we have listened to it's about money you know um a lot of it has been about money and is still about money I remember um an old song uh um i think it was Diana Ross was it Diana Ross I doubt. Uh, no romance without finance. Something like that. No romance without finance. Something like that. Uh, if if you wanna get with me, you gotta have a job. Something like that. And um, you know, over time. People have made songs. They have made um, interesting sayings about money. Money makes the world go round. Money does that. Oh my God! A lot of things have been said about money. So money is um, a very big. It's a very big and sensitive issue to the world and to the christian but to the christian it shouldn't be and this is why when god calls a man he calls you as you are remember when god called moses he called the man and then when it came to um working miracles they used he used his stuff he used what Moses had he didn't give him a stuff he used the stuff Moses had you know he told him throw down your stuff and it will turn and it turned into a snake you know so god uses what you have but i'm going to give you a slight example of what money does if you go to um the book of um matthew chapter 13 the parable of the sower the parable of the sower talks about um this sower that goes out and um sows seed seed of four different categories the first uh, category fell on uh, by the wayside the next category fell on rocky ground the third fell in amongst the thorns and the last category fell on good ground and it both uh, it bore it bore fruits but here it says you know Jesus explains the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13 from verse 18. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of God, the word of the kingdom, and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received seed into stony places, the same is he that hears the word. And a nun with joy receives it. Yet has he not root in himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word of God. 
and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful but he that receives seed into good ground is he that hears the word and understands it which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundred and some sixty and some thirty fold so the third category which is verse 22 matthew 13 verse 22 is the category where i wanted to lead us that this is a christian that believes the word of god but when the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches come in they come and choke the word that this man has when god calls us he calls you the way you are you receive this word you receive this revelation of christ and then he starts using you he starts using you uh let me read another scripture uh, matthew 25 No, let me read. Let me read from Matthew 10. Let me read first from Matthew 10. Matthew 10 is um, when the Lord sent out the 12 disciples and he gave, them, he gave them this very instruction. Matthew 10 from verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. So, I find this quite profound that Jesus heals the disciples, he gives them authority over these uh, unclean spirits, over diseases. And he instructs them to go and free the captives, you know, the lepers, to cleanse them, to preach the word of God, and, um, yeah, the sick. But he tells them that because freely you have received, you also freely give. Today the world has perverted this. Today you go to churches, and um, there are some churches that pray for people, uh, for money. They ask for money to pray for you. That is one. They have crafted a way of deceiving people, people that do not know the word of God. They tell them that, come and sow seed. But now, when you're sowing seed, you have to sow from this amount. You see how people are deceived? Sowing seed is not a biblical thing. It is not a biblical thing. What is in the Bible is tithing and offerings. That is what's in the Bible. But sowing a seed, sowing a seed as in the in the in the church, in the that is not a biblical thing. So and anyone is welcome to pull out the scriptures to back that up. But here's one thing I want to show you about money. When God calls a man, he calls you the way you are. So he calls you, you receive the word. That's why I want to show you that obedience is better than sacrifice, is better than all these other things that we can do. Because he calls you as a man and he wants you to go and preach. When God calls you, he wants you. He wants you as a mouthpiece. You are his mouthpiece. You go and preach the word. But now imagine, if I have received a vision. Today in the world we live in, we have um, social media, we have WhatsApp, we have uh, email, we have Telegram, we have YouTube. We have a lot, 
many platforms to send messages to people. But if I received a message from God for somebody and I hesitate in this way and I think to myself, oh my God, I have to make this message presentable. How am I going to present this message? Uh, let me invite this person for a meal. Now I have to cut away, let's say, a certain amount of money. Uh, let me save some money so that I go out and preach to them the word of God in a good environment, in you know, in a serene environment. Uh, let me make it all perfect for them so that I present the word of God. That comes from a good heart and good intentions, and it's not bad. But there is one problem with it. It limits you. And that's where the enemy grabs you. He's like, no, you can't preach. You can't preach the word of God uh, to somebody on the streets. You can't preach the word of God to somebody in the parking lot, you know. But God wants, if you have a message he has given you, go and deliver the message. Today you can send somebody a voice note. You can send somebody a text. You can send somebody an email. That is all serving God, you know. But if you decide to wait until the avenue is serene, it's comfortable, you are never going to serve God. Because every, not every single time you, you, you serve God, you relay a message. You go out to share. It's going to be comfortable. Sometimes it's unbearable. Sometimes it's complicated. What matters is you relaying the message. How you relay the message or the conditions of you relaying the message for the most part they do not matter doesn't mean you have to dress up so smart and then go relay a message deliver a message but if you don't have the good clothes does that mean you're never going to serve god you're never going to relay the message so that is one thing about money money has created uh creates comfort you know, it creates comfort. It's um, it's a medium of exchange, of course. But money makes things easy. But that's where the trick is. The trick is you serving God the way you are. Because you, you were never born with the money. You made the money. You make the money. You were never born with it. And let me tell you one thing. In this world, it doesn't matter how much money you, you have, you will always want and want and desire more. That is where, where, why these are scammers. That's why the, the rich keep growing richer and richer and richer. And people keep growing and working hard every, every, every year. But the thing about money that so many of us do not fathom is that money is that avenue that the enemy has used so much to grasp most of the servants of God. When you're a servant of God, the enemy is going to pull out uh, Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 22. You know? It's going to make sure you, you, you are worried. You are filled with fear. What will I eat? What will I do? How will I survive? How will this happen? Where will I get this money? He will get you to worry about that. And this is why you, you have seen um, men of God over time changing. Because they are tired of serving God in these conditions. They want the money. They want things to move fast. So they end up giving up to the enemy. They give in to the enemy and the direction of the ministry changes. They start condoning the lifestyle of the world because... The money they are using comes from that world. But you see the thing with God, he wants you to be patient because through patience is how we learn this endurance, you learn patience, then you become perfect in God. But how many people are willing to do that? That's one thing you need to ask yourself. The other thing is that the world we live in is full of tests impressing people people talk people have opinions 
they will come and tell you, ah, this this person he he's broke, he's this, he's that, and all these things will provoke you. And these are the cares of the world. You know. Uh, these are the cares of the world. And the deceitfulness of riches. Let me tell you something. Today, if a church has no electricity, if they have no microphone, if they have no keyboard, there is no church service. If a church is like that, then you just know that church doesn't serve God. It doesn't matter how nice and how sometimes the Holy Spirit uses them. <coughs> if God was to gauge them on a scale, they do not serve him. Because serving God, you serve him come rain, come sunshine. You will go and do it. It doesn't matter where the, whether there is electricity. Adam and Eve didn't have electricity. The Israelites didn't have electricity back then. But they served God. The disciples. They were homeless. Jesus was homeless. I remember a man came to Jesus and said that, Lord, uh, um, I, I want to forsake all and follow you. And Jesus told him, foxes have holes, the falls of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. So Jesus was telling him, you are coming, fine. But you're coming for a hard road. You're coming in into a life that is tough. So you better brace yourself. And the man said, Ah, he has to go and and say farewell to his, you know, bid farewell to his people. So the thing is that it is true this life is hard, it's very it's complicated, but God has a way. Of comforting us through it. I'll give you an example. When I just come to this nation, I came with nothing. Like it was tough, and I start this channel. I had no intentions of of asking for money or anything like that. I had no intentions of that. And I still don't have intentions of that. And um, I started my journey to do um, animation and I started the way I was. I started with what I had. And somebody came through the channel and they blessed me. I got equipment. And let me tell you something. I won't mention the person's name because they desire to stay anonymous. But the person told me, this person told me that, hey, I feel in my spirit, I feel led to support what you are doing. And they supported me. That was God going before me. He spoke to another servant of his somewhere. That came and supported me. So I want you to know one thing. When God sends you to do something, when God calls you to serve, he's going to look after you. He will provide for you. I do not have everything in this world, but I have the things I need. The things I need, I do have. And I remember I was talking to um, a friend one time, and um, she told me, hey, um, if you need any help, any support, do not hesitate to reach out. And I find this quite hard, you know, because I do not want to burden anyone. I do not want to burden people. But I remember I told her one thing. The truth is, I will always need help. I will always need some kind of help. You know? But I was pushed not to ask for anything. Because the thing I know about this asking is how pastors, it's how uh, servants of God start falling. They start falling like that. That you start looking at money rather than serving God. You start getting lazy, slowly by slowly. Let me tell you, you are not smarter than Satan. He slowly grabs you. God has a reason why we are in the condition we are in, wherever we are. He knows why somebody is rich. 
why he has blessed somebody that much and he knows why you are still where you are and he's building you slowly by slowly or he's uh, quickening you whatever is happening god has a reason for that the key is to be patient and to be grateful that we are alive that we are blessed wherever we are the thing the other thing is that um when one gets uh, lost and choked in the things of this world, they only start caring for the world. A person will be like, ah, let's say you used to walk to church, and now you're driving, and the car maybe breaks down, or perhaps your car is not around, it's not, it's not available. But you used to walk to church. Let's say it's um, a kilometer or half a kilometer and you used to walk that journey. After you got the car, you got so lazy. And that is the comfort of life controlling you. Because now you can't go to church to preach. Because you're like, oh, I have no car so I can't go. But before you used to go. The thing is, God never wants us to forget the roots. That's why God asks, uh, asks in the book of Revelation, if you fall, if, that's why Christ says in the book of Revelation that if you fall back, I think that um, Revelation, the first uh, three chapters, the seven churches, that if you fall back to the first love, I want you to fall back to the first love. The first love is when a man is willing to do anything for God. Because at that time, you appreciate what God has done to you, for you, and you understand the power, the magnitude, the integrity of God. But when the comfort of life settles in, the cares of life engulf you, you start forgetting the power of God, the integrity of God, the things that you, in the first place, had agreed to stand upon. That is the first love. First love is when a man is obedient. He's willing to go anywhere. God tells you, go there. You don't look at, I have no money. I have no car. You, you, you will walk there. I have no clothes. How will people see me? You will wear what you have. And you go there. And serve God. But the truth is, how many people have the heart to do that today? Or how many people maintain that part of the integrity that when money comes it doesn't change you i'm going to read uh, from matthew 25 the parable of uh, the talents for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he, he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one, one went and dug in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckon, reckons with them. And so he that had received, he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying Lord thou delivered unto me five talents behold I have gained beside them five talents more and the Lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy Lord a man who received little who was faithful with less, with five, is now being given more. When you first come to salvation with the first love, you are given what? Knowledge. 
love, a transformation. You are given these pearls, this wisdom, this knowledge. And all God asks is for you to be obedient. And through the obedience, God quickens you, he elevates you, you know? And then you become more and more and more. He keeps giving you more and more responsibilities because you are faithful with the little he gave you. He starts by giving you a small vision. He says, hey, go and share this with somebody. So and so, go and pray for so and so. They have cancer. And then you start shaking. But if you go on one heart with all your faith, go and pray for that person. Because God has given you, if God gives you a dream, he has given you the power. So you go and pray for that person, the person heals. Then you go and keep working and working and working until, you know, so the first, the, the first guy, uh, he receives, he also that received two talents, that's verse 22 of Matthew 25, came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew that thee i knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strolled and i was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou has there thou has that is thine so have which is yours which his lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful servant thou knowest that i reap where i sowed not and gather where i have not strolled thou ought therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. For every one that ha that has shall be given, and he that sh that shall have a ban and he shall sorry. For every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has that has not shall be taken away even that which he has and cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth so you see what um god does to those that are disobedient he expects us to use the little we have we are not as servants of god we are not supposed to go and burden people and start burdening people that hey we need money we need money for this we need money for this we need money to collect for this if your church does that in my opinion there's something questionable about the mission of that church a church is not supposed to burden people a church is not supposed to burden people a church again let me say this again a church is not supposed to burden people with finances more about the cares of the world here is what the lord says no man can serve that is matthew 6 verse 24 no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon so the thing is you cannot be in the, in the intersection of both worlds you either fall here or there. You either fall for God and he provides for you. Or you fall this side and you provide for yourself. You do everything your way. You manipulate, you scam, you steal, you deceive. But you can't be in between serving God and at the end of the day you'll find one. You'll find it so hectic here. You either find, fall here or there. So Matthew six twenty four elaborates on that. So let me ask a question that I'm still going to answer anyway. How 
is uh, kingdom finances? How is money supposed to be received? How is money supposed? How is the money issue supposed to be um, handled in the church of God? The church of God rides on two things: tithings and offerings. But today we live in a very, very, very wicked and fallen world that most of the churches people are tithing to are thugs. They're deceivers. People have to have discernment where to put their money. If your church is edifying you spiritually and you are really growing in the word of God and every time you, 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 you're serving God, you're growing you are rebuked, you are brought back to God, you are renewed, that is a place for you to tithe. That is a place for you to send your offering. Because then, you are supporting the people, the word of God. You are supposed to support that place, that church, which edifies you. Now, let me give you a background of how tithing came about. Tithing came about uh, with, the, with the law and uh, Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. And all these 12 tribes, each tribe had a responsibility. And the, the Levites were the tribe of priests. And these people, they were not allowed to do anything else but the duties of the divine. So, the rest... The farmers, the artists, uh, uh, the um, the kings, the what, the what, they were to bring a tenth of all their increase to this tribe, to the house of God. And the house of God was supposed to distribute equally or as needed all through these people so that they are fed. These people, they kept the oracles of God. They had, their thing was to teach, to edify to grow and to excel in the ways of God so that God can look at men and say, I have my people, I have people I have set apart to love, to cherish, to teach my ways to the rest of the world. But we live in a fallen world. Where are the Levites now? They are scattered. They are scattered. It is a fallen world. But that was the order of things so Satan knows that things work in order. If there is order, you cannot destroy anything. So Satan destroys order. He brings his false people into the church. He brings uh, pedophiles. He brings uh, homosexuals in church. He brings thugs. Uh, he brings um, scammers. He brings adulterers. He brings all sorts of mannerisms in the church so that people can no longer trust the church and run away from it. And they will be like sheep without a shepherd. That is when wolves attack and eat every single one of the sheep. So, I'm going to read from Malachi 3. Or I think it's Malachi or Malachi. I don't know how it's pronounced. But let me go with Malachi. So, Malachi chapter 3 from verse 7 to 18. The importance of tithing. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, Where, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. That is verse, uh, Malachi 3 verse 8. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into, into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here, herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven 
and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you, shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. So, I've stopped at verse 12. So we see the importance of tithing, that tithing is to feed the house of God. Why, who is the house of God? The servants of God, those that serve God. You know, God uh, calculated and constructed this, this system. He put a system in place where everything will handle itself. You know, you bring in tithes and my people are blessed. And he will throw a blessing. How does God give you a blessing? He says that he will open uh, up the, the gates, the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. How do you receive this blessing? You receive this blessing because it's, it is steps. When you provide for these people, they are nourished, they are okay, they are going to serve God. That's if they're doing their work. They're going to serve God. They're going to come with a word for you, a word for the seasons. They're going to come and provide, uh, provide prophecies. They're going to come and pray with you, pray for you, because that is what they are meant to do. And God is going to reveal to his house the works of the enemy. That every single time you go to, 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 to church, every single time you encounter the, the children of God, when they come maybe to your house, in your neighborhood, to check on you, they are going to come with a word. They are going to come with discernment. They walk with their gifts everywhere. They are going to see what is wrong in your house. And they will, they will teach you. They will reveal it to you. Of course, God reveals it to them. Then they reveal it to you. You pray about it and you go to change the situation. Of course, through the word of God. Do you understand? They will not lack. So when the church has, they will send people out. That is the true church of God. They will send people out on missions to preach the word of God in the remote and areas and in, in the urban uh, places, in uh, metropolitans, in everywhere. Because they have resources to do that. But when they do not have the resources to do that, they're not going to do it. And this is why God is calling people single-handedly from very many places. Because the church has failed Christ. The church that he left has failed him. That's why God is calling people like me. He's calling people like you. He's calling people like your daughters, your sons, your parents. A person you knew five years ago, you go and meet them and they're preaching the word of God. You're like, James, when did you start preaching the word of God? Man, the Lord called me. You understand? He's calling people. He's calling people everywhere because the church has failed. He's using anyone that is willing. And I want to tell you something, guys. Tithing is a system that keeps you in the protection of God. Because when you provide for the church of God, they are going to concentrate on what they are supposed to do. They are not going to sit down and worry. Today you see ministers in cryptocurrency waiting in the night. Oh, I wish those numbers go, I wish those numbers go up. That guy is supposed to be sleeping, but he's up at one waiting for the church to go up. A servant of God. That guy after that, he's going to come and start preaching cryptocurrency to you. Yet he's not supposed to do that. He's supposed to come with a word. He's supposed to come and edify you. He's not supposed to come with worldly things. He's not I'm telling you, servants of God are not supposed to come with worldly things. They have to come to feed your spirit, not your flesh. 
They come and feed your spirit, they challenge your flesh. That's what the word of God does, is to edify you every single time. But if you see servants of God start getting indulged, uh, uh, if, they, if they start indulging in the things of the world, they are going to incorporate that in their daily life, even when they start talking. So if a, if, if a servant of God watches movies so much, listens to lots of music, he's going to come and start talking about music for the whole 30 or 40 minutes. He will start talking about movies for the whole 30 or 40 minutes of service that he's supposed to, to share the word of God. So, and the Bible says that uh, we have to test all these spirits and we see them by the fruits. We test them by the fruits and I shared with you how to discern spirits, how to test spirits in a previous video. So, money is a very serious issue. But my advice to the servants of God is this. We live in a fallen world. Do not wait for people to support you. God who has called you, he will make this a reality. Satan has infiltrated the church. He has, make us, he, he, he has made uh, the children of God look like uh, scammers, Thieves, I'm telling you, we, are, we have been made everything. But now, we, we can't rely on the world, what the world says about us. We have to seek and look at God, and God alone. God, he will make things move. If, if God doesn't want to, if he doesn't provide for you, perhaps you have um, one year of serving him, and then he calls you home, then let that be. Let it be. But don't go out there chasing after this world. Do not fall in the cares and the deceitfulness of riches. I know it is hard. I know it is hard when you, when you are in need. But let me tell you, we will always be in need because we live in a flesh, in a fleshy world. We always have to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has to lead us through everything. Because we cannot start demanding people to give us what they do not have. People work hard for their money. That is one. And God hasn't called us to take money. He has called us to give freely. And he will provide. If you ever find a, a, a child of God that is lacking and they're making it a burden to you to provide for them they are either not called to do that or they are not walking righteously with god they're not walking patiently with god i am telling you that it gets hard hard and hard to an extent that you don't even have what to eat i'm telling you that but that is where God wants us. He wants us to serve with all that we have. Because he's going to give us eternal life. He's going to provide. I'm telling you in the next life, you forget that you ever slept hungry. Let me end with a testimony. We recently went to the pediatrician, right? And um, pediatrician uh, checks on the child. He observes everything with the child is okay. He's like, I don't see anything wrong with the child. The child is developing well, you know. And um, he asked us, it's, um, is there anything that, anything, any concerns you have or anything? I just told him, I, I just think the child is it's not walking yet, you know, because I've seen other kids around, they're walking. And she's not walking. She sits up. She's, she's fine. She's healthy. And, and, her cognitive uh, development is, is okay, in my own opinion. She's, she's fine, she's smart, she's fast. And he, he refers us to um, an occupational therapist. And every time you know you're going to um, specialists, this is a lot of money. This is a lot of money. Ah, so we think about it, me and my wife, we're like, man, now we're going to spend money and all that. But thank God, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, hey... You have, to take, you have to go and check the, the occupational therapist because 
that is where the child's calling falls. You have to go there. So I told my wife, we have to go to the occupational therapist because you never know the child's destiny. That's what we are blocking. So we have to go there. I know it might cost a lot, but let's go. So we go. This Tuesday we went. It was at 9. We head there. Uh, the lady checks um, everything uh, she has. About 20 minutes or 14 minutes with the child. Uh, she does um, a simple, what should I call it, test with a child. And um, yeah, she tells us the child is okay and all this and that and that. So we reached the time of um, asking uh, the money part. And she says, ah, no, you don't need to worry about the money. I, I'm going to do this for free. I do this work for free. It's like, what? You do this work for free? Just right there and then, my wife burst into tears immediately. I was like, it was unbelievable. Like, what? And then my mind just went like, all these memories, I was in this tunnel of memories. I was just seeing, I was like, wow, God truly provides. God truly provides. All you have to do is just be obedient. God will provide. I'm telling you, you almost never went there. Because God had already told us that your child is fine. And then when we were at the occupational therapist, she said something very interesting. She said that your child is spiritually discerning she's spiritually active there's something about her and she says that i see that she has something in line with to do with down syndrome people and to show love to people that is where her calling falls i was like wow so we only we went and we received a word from somebody else. And you know, this is very hard, you know, when you go to um, uh, people's practice, uh, practice, uh, practices and uh, you talk about religion and all. That means she also had discernment. So she discerned that, hey, these people are Christians. Let me speak to you. And she asked us, are you guys Christians? We told her, yeah, we, we, we believe in the Lord. She was like, okay. Um, yeah, that's when she uh, revealed that. So, when God calls you, when God sends you somewhere, He will provide. He will He will go before you. But if He doesn't, then you are on your own. And sometimes, if things are not going uh, according to your speed. It doesn't mean God hasn't called you there. It takes patience. If you're sure God has, if you're really sure that God has called you some somewhere, be patient where, wherever you are. He's gonna provide. It doesn't matter how long you have been there. And when you start having this doubt, this doubt, you just keep making, you just keep interrupting with His process. But if you surrender, He will quicken you. And I pray that prayer for you. Whoever is going through that, whatever situation you are going through, I pray that the Lord quickens you. And I pray that you start seeing and experiencing his blessings and his favor in that situation. God bless you.